create collective courage for Deseret. Good morning, everyone. To intertwine with Bill's story a little bit, I really appreciated uh, looking at the doctorate as being a teacher. I don't know if some of you know I'm getting a PhD in educational leadership, and I've been asking myself a lot lately, like, I'm not sure why I'm doing this at this point. So I appreciate the reminder of teaching and what that means. Because when you look at life, it really is this either a roller coaster, maybe, at best, or a natural disaster at worst. A lot of us, we have so much variety in our intensity, our emotions, our experiences. But there's something that is in common for all of us humans. We struggle immensely. And with this struggle, <coughs> we can choose how we deal with the struggle if we have the courage to do it. And looking at these, courage is really kind of a deep kind of thing when you think about it. It's not just about, I'm going to grab my weapon and go into battle. Really, if you look at some of these quotes here on the screen, becoming who you are, staying in the face of that pursuit, no matter what else happens, is something that is difficult to do and requires a lot of courage. So today we're going to talk about how to create courage and how that re relates to all of us. Some of my favorite movies will be an example for this. Now if we take Alice in Wonderland, when she stepped into Wonderland, she was a hot mess. She was scared, she didn't know what she was doing, she didn't know that she was the warrior who was going to slay the Jabberwocky. And the Mad Hatter tells her what you see there on the left, which is like, who are you? You're not Alice. You've lost your muchness. And that's definitely something that I have felt before. But once she owned the fact that she was the warrior that was going to kill the Jabberwocky, suddenly her story went from terrifying chaos to exciting adventure. And she was able to do that. Now Poe from Kung Fu Panda, he knew that he didn't want to be the soup slinger, but he also didn't want to be the dragon warrior. And it wasn't until he started acting like a hero that he then became one. Both of these characters really had to let go of who they thought they were in order to become who they were meant to be. So thinking about how do I have courage or start this process of making my life have a different kind of purpose, you have to start small. So think of an avalanche. You have to start things rolling and then everything else goes through. So if you step into the new adventures, it kind of starts to roll and you start to see then who you're supposed to be. There's a poem by Marianne Williamson that gets inside my soul. And the reason it does is because she presents such a beautiful and kind of simple way to look at this. So our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. There is nothing you. You are a child of God. You're playing small. It does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we face our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Now, we're kind of a deep group, so to intertwine the stories that we've told before, many of us understand what it's like to go through struggle. But owning the beautiful part and stepping into that is an idea that I can definitely get behind, because for me, the purpose of that poem is this right here, that we have the power to choose the purpose of our life. We don't have the power to choose what happens to us. A lot of times we don't have the power to choose the tools or the people that are available to us. But we do have the power to choose the purpose of our lives. When I was two, my dad used to, uh, well, from the time I was born, my dad used to like to yell just to watch us run away because he thought it was funny. But when I was two, I stopped running. And I turned around and I yelled back at him, which was probably surprising. But it shows from that moment, before I even kind of knew what was going on, I was choosing the purpose of my life, and that was 
to fight back, to fight for myself. So fast forward through my adolescence, pretty much I was about proving people wrong. So whatever you told me I couldn't do, I'm going to show you that, that I can do that. From the culture and family that I come from, college degrees, um, athletics at the college level, all of those things were not possible or they made you uppity, or they made you separate from different things. But the purpose of my life was to fight for who I wanted to be. Most recently, I ended a 12-year relationship, the crux of with, which was getting picked up by my sweatshirt and shook like a rag doll. And I guess it kind of worked. She did shake some sense into me, but not in the way that she hoped. Um, because the sense that I finally came to was that I had to choose the purpose of my life. Now, I could choose to keep the status quo. We have a 14-year-old daughter, 12 years is a, a lifetime together. So I could have chosen to stay there, but that wasn't the purpose. My purpose is not to maintain the status quo and to sacrifice things to kind of keep things steady. So instead, I decided I would choose my purpose and take action. In this process, though, I've learned that I have to make a promise to myself, which is that I will not sacrifice my mind, body, or spirit in this process. When I was going to college and people were telling me that wasn't going to happen, there's no way I would get a scholarship for those things, I worked out probably for six or eight hours a day. Not exactly healthy. When I got into my career, there were days, most times, that I worked 10 to 14 hours a day. Also not healthy. And in all of that distraction, I lost the focus. So I kind of sacrificed the things that made me healthy, which prevented me from really kind of seeing what I wanted my purpose to be. And what I discovered is that you have to live in the moment. And for some of us, that means breath by breath. So maybe I failed. Now I'm not. And I'm going to choose again to live in the moment. To forgive myself and others graciously and abundantly. And give myself permission to shine. Because that's not something that I've always done. So the title is Create Collective Courage. How do I change the world? I change myself. Because as I step into this place where I own my purpose, I can do something about it, and I have to, so I can't be a victim anymore. I have to choose what I'm going to do. And as I do that, I step into my own light. Or in other words, I turn it on. Because that's all that it takes, what Marianne Williamson is talking about, is giving yourself permission to flip that light and find the thing that gives you the purpose of your life. And it really comes down to these three things. Find joy in having a purpose, no matter which one, uh, what that is that makes sense to you at the time. Find peace in the power that you have in yourself to define that power and do something with it. And finally, find belonging in the beauty of the gifts that we're meant to be. So step into your own light, let it shine, give yourself permission, and bring the collective up by doing that with yourself. So.